I start my lesson on tenses, explaining to the children how important communication is. Okay, and there are lots of other ways that I can communicate with you. I can talk to you. Has anybody got another idea of how I can communicate with you? What am I doing at this moment? What am I doing at this moment? You're talking to us? I'm talking to you. Okay, and that is the form of communication. That's how I get my ideas across, my views, my feelings, and my thoughts. A language is made up of words. Words lead to sentences, sentences to paragraphs, to pages, to chapters, to books. Don't be like that, replied the mother. You're a tortoise, and all tortoises have to carry their shell with them. It may be a nuisance. The home language have a fable called the discontented tortoise. I fly high in the air and look far over the countryside. You only see the bushes in front of your nose. And the additional language had a folklore story called How a Wolf Learned to Fly. Out of both these stories we're going to read today, we are going to learn something that hopefully we'll be able to take with us. So what I want you first of all to do is look up the word fable in your dictionary. A fable is a traditional story that teaches a moral lesson. The blackboard tells us that we're doing tenses and we're doing present, past and future tense on which all language is based. The story that they have in front of them now, I ask them to block the words that are in the present tense and those words are blocked in blue. <laughs> Try and find those sentences in the story we have just read and then with a blue colour we are going to underline the word. Then there is another next set of sentences that I have given them. And these sentences, instead of the full sentence, I leave out the verb. And this is where they're going to put in past tense verbs, which they're going to do in yellow. All right, again, Joshua, sentence number two. Not many creatures block are lucky to have their shells with them wherever they block. OK. Now. Again, it's a repeat of sentence number two, and I want you to look at sentence number two and see what am I going to put there in place of the present tense verb. Were. Not many creatures were lucky to have their shells with them wherever they, Tomeko, went. I follow them through to the next step, and that's the future tense, also simple tense. And here they must use their green color and they're now given a third set of sentences. And then they go back to their story, and in their story, they underline all the future tense verbs in green. And on the blackboard, I have got simple, continuous, and perfect. So I now go to the second step, and that's continuous. They must look that word up in the dictionary. Happening or existing without stopping. Uh, the pieces of paper on the table now, they have present on the top of one form, past on the top of the next and future on top of the last and on these papers there are numbers one to five and under each number there is just a line where they're going to be filling in sentences. We start off with the present tense and I ask them to write down a sentence. It comes from the class. Okay now I want a sentence from one of you. A present tense sentence that's simple. Okay? Mustn't be continuous, it must be simple. Okay, Henriette? I like to swim in the summer. And I ask them to do the same for number two, seven, simple present tense verb, a sentence, and the same for number three. Then we take the sentence that they wrote for number one in the simple present, take the same sentence, and we rewrite it into the simple continuous using the same sentence. I like swimming in the summer. Okay, I like swimming in the summer. It sounds fun. Let's write it down. We look at the auxiliary, we underline the auxiliary and the verb, and we block them or underline them again in blue. That it's a good idea to use colors with the tenses because that's something that they visualize and remember, especially the children who learn by visualizing um, pictures or words or learning that way. Once we've done that, we move on to the past tense. They underline the past tense verb in yellow, and then I ask them to take the same sentence and write it in the past continuous. 
I was going to town. We move on to the future tense. On the board are the two auxiliaries, will and shall, they shall leave. Take that sentence, change it into the future continuous, they will leave, they will leave, they will be leaving. Auxiliary words, will and be, leave the verb ing, the past participle, they underline it all now in green, because the future is green. Then I ask them to refer back to the story that they have read, and I ask them to look for all the present tense verbs. And then the past tense in the story all must be underlined in yellow or blocked. Once they finish the story, I'll ask some of the pupils in the class to read their endings to the story. The tortoise realized that a shell is not a bad thing after all, and she complained no more. Let that be a lesson to you, called Vulture from, from on high. An animal is made to run, and a bird is made to fly. Animals who try to do otherwise only get into difficulties. They take their three colours once again, and they underline in the rest of the story. The present tense verbs, whether they be simple, continuous or, or perfect, as well as the past, in yellow, simple, continuous and perfect, and in the future, the same thing with green. And that is the end of my lesson.